First news. Melania showed up to G7 Summit concert last night and everyone immediately noticed something stunningly familiar. Amid all the important business and running of the world, the world leaders slowed down to attend a concert at the G7 Summit in Italy this week. The leaders and their significant others all showed up in fine form, and of course, what everyone was wearing, and who shook, or held, hands with whom has become a hot topic. Melania Trump was, of course, decked out in a beautiful Dolce & Gabbana dress for the third time during this trip. This is possibly because of the asinine boycott that some designers have decided to have against the First Lady because of her husband's political policies. However, considering the price tag on their custom gowns, I'm not sure that DNG is getting the short end of the stick. Also of note, for some insane reason, is that the President and First Lady were holding hands when they reached the event. There's been controversy on the left about whether the famous first couple really loves each other, or if Melania is ready to get some distance between herself and the president. Obviously, this is just a part of the liberal smear campaign, because these two seem to be doing just fine. Via Daily Mail, Dazzling Melania Trump holds Donald's hand as she arrives at concert for G7 leaders and their spouses in a custom Dolce and Gabbana gown after donning the label's $51,500 jacket earlier in the day in the evening, the couple joined the other G7 leaders and their partners for a concert by the La Scala Philharmonic Orchestra at the Ancient Theatre of Tarmina. The First Lady once again opted for a Dolce and Gabbana design, this time wearing a custom-made version of a silver dress seen on the label's Fall 2017. Runway after landing in Sicily on Air Force One Melania and President Trump were pictured clasping hands as they made their way down the steps of the plane before getting into a waiting limo. Sicily is the final stop of the couple's first overseas tour as President and First Lady of the United States. It is the final day of Donald and Melania Trump's first official tour as President and First Lady, and it looks like 47-year-old Melania is eager to go out with a sartorial bang. After having made a chic arrival in Sicily, where her husband is attending a G7 summit, Melania stepped out Friday morning in the coastal town of Catania, making a very stylish statement in a $51,500 coat by Dolce & Gabbana, which was covered with colorful 3D flower embellishments, and came complete with a matching $1,630 purse by the Italian luxury label. However, the first lady traded the statement coat for a shimmery, high-neck silver dress and equally sparkly $945 shoes by Dolce & Gabbana to attend a concert by the La Scala Philharmonic Orchestra at the ancient Greek theater of Tarmina with her husband, President Trump, on Friday evening. Although the price of the one-of-a-kind dress is not known, made-to-order dresses from DMG's couture runway shows reportedly start at a minimum of $40,000. Melania looked radiant as she and Trump arrived hand-in-hand -hand at the concert, which was attended by other G7 leaders, including France's new president, Emmanuel Macron. Macron gave a big smile when he shook hands with Melania, just one day after his awkward handshake with her husband. At their first meeting ahead of the NATO summit in Brussels on Thursday, the two leaders locked hands for so long that knuckles started turning white. Trump finally seemed ready to pull away, but Macron evidently wasn't. The French president held the shake for a few seconds more. Both men's jaw seemed to clench. If these pictures are any indication they're getting along fine. But if anyone who's ever been married is honest, they will admit that they might not always want to hold hands with their spouse. That's not because anybody is a horrible person, it's just because you have an off day from time to time. However, these two seem to have good days more often than most. And while we're talking about the first couple's family life, there's been so much talk about the age gap between our president and first lady, but none about the age gap between the new French president Emmanuel Macron, 39, and his wife, Bridget, 64. Does anybody want to call one of them names for the roles being reversed? Or can we just assume that they both chose one another of their own free will and they're happy together? Because I'm pretty sure that if no crimes are being committed and nobody is being forced to do anything against their will, that's what you're supposed to assume. Considering the life that Melania is getting to live, and the beautiful smiles that she's flashing around everywhere she goes, she seems to be having a great time and to be doing a good job. Melania Trump has a family that adores her, a country that looks up to her, an entire army to protect her and a life of travel and humanitarian work to keep her busy. I think she's doing all right. Source, Daily Mail, 
share if you think the President and First Lady are a great American couple. Second News DHS Chief just released a terrifying statement that will make you never want to go outside again. Memorial Day weekend begins today. People use this as a weekend to party, eat cheap hot dogs, do keg stands, and thank the military for allowing us the freedom to seldom act like idiots. Then there's this guy John Kelly who put a realistic dent in the fun before it starts. He's the Homeland Security Chief and he gave us the heads up that a terror attack could happen at any time. While that's something we already know, we're more interested in what else Kelly knows. It almost seems like the, the way Kelly says this isn't in the sense that we all know terror attacks happen at random moments. But it was more like he knew something specific was in the air and it left us all wondering what it could be. Or where, who, what, etc. Homeland Security Chief John Kelly offered a dire assessment of the terror situation in America on Friday, just as many Americans were preparing for holiday travel. Kelly said a terror attack can happen almost here any time during a Fox News appearance. Recalling a conversation he was having off-air with Fox and Friends host Steve Dussey, Kelly said from the famous Fox couch, I was telling Steve on the way in here, if, if he knew what I know about terrorism, he'd never leave the house in the morning. The first reaction is for us to tell Kelly to tell us what he knows. Obviously if there's information that pertains to terrorists, then he certainly can't tell all the details to the public. If he does that, then he reveals that he knows what's planned and the terrorists change their plans. It wouldn't make sense for him to reveal what he knows and allow people to respond or react to it. It also doesn't make sense for him to provide purposeful misinformation in hopes that terrorists respond to that, because that might create unnecessary fear and panic in the American citizens. So what does he do? He tells us what we already know and leaves it at that. It still leaves you wondering though, right? He quickly added, but the good news is, again, we have the finest men and women in uniform, out of uniform, police officers, local law enforcement, New York City cops protecting us. Friday marks the start of Memorial Day weekend in the U.S., a holiday dedicated that's formally dedicated to the nation's fallen but many Americans use for vacation. Kelly's terror warning came after terrorists carried out four attacks in one week across Europe, Asia, and Africa. Is that a slip up? He said New York City cops. Is there a terror attack planned in NYC this weekend? If he had just said cops without specifying the NYC police, then what would we think? Sure, he may have been in NYC at the time and was simply talking about protection in his locality, but that still leaves some minds wandering and wondering what he knows. Do we want to know more information? I think we do, but I also think we don't. Everyone loves knowing everything but think about this from the mind of a terrorist. If they think we are expecting an attack in NYC, then maybe they change their mind and attack San Francisco. If NYC increases security, then why would they still attack when there's less chance of success? What happens if every city is on high alert and all eyes are open and watching everyone's activity? What does Chief John Kelly know about terrorism that could hurt or haunt us? I'm sure Kellyanne tells people who are on the need-to-know basis and that certainly isn't the average citizen. We may want that information, but there's no reason it needs to be in anyone's hands except the people who are paid to provide security to our country and thwart attacks before they happen. Hopefully DHS Chief Kelly's information goes towards protection of American citizens and is used in the best way possible. If his information, whatever it may be, prevents at least one attack, then he's already saved people. Just don't forget, terrorists can strike at any time and anywhere. Always keep your eyes open as needed. The third news. After the Trump's first overseas trip, everyone says Melania isn't the first lady, here's who is. The president has given his daughter Ivanka a high priority in his administration as well as a coveted job. Giving the perception that he values her opinions far more than others in the administration. He has also notably given Ivanka's husband Jared Kushner an important role as well. On his first overseas trip abroad the president brought his daughter and son-in-law sparking rumors that Ivanka is playing more of a first lady role than Melania Trump herself. Ivanka has appeared at state level meetings, classified briefings, receptions, dinners, and events. While Melania Trump has been more in the background as she currently lives in New York with her son Barron until he finishes school.
which has made people believe that Ivanka has been taking over her role. Some argue that the First Lady's body language indicates she never wanted the position she holds and that she is a more reserved and private person. Whereas the position of First Lady requires one to live under public scrutiny. Liberals have tried to create a narrative in which Melania hates her husband which they point to her refusing to hold his hand as evidence of. Via Daily Mail, no Trump superlative is too great for daddy's little darling. She's the apple of his eye, she can walk into the Oval Office without an appointment, and the woman whom he once queasily said he would probably be dating if she wasn't his daughter. She's got the best body, he boasted to a radio show when she was all of 21. Now she's his White House assistant, an undefined, unpaid role, and has her own office in the West Wing and a front row seat in government. So far, Ivanka has proved a political asset, turning on the charm with world leaders. Just days after Mr. Trump had an uncomfortable meeting with Angela Merkel, apparently failing to shake her hand, the German leader was welcoming his daughter to a conference on working women in Berlin. She managed it again this week with the Pope one minute he was standing glowering next to Donald Trump and the next he had a huge smile on his face as he shook Ivanka's hand. The president can rely on his daughter to get opponents eating out of his hand. For all her protestations that she wanted to just be a daughter to the president, nobody was surprised when Ivanka took a White House post which entails being one of his chief confidants. Insiders say she has more liberal views on issues such as abortion and gay rights, and doesn't hesitate to contradict her father. Critics are not convinced, asking how can she really be the feminist progressive she claims to be when her father who boasted groping women was one of the perks of power is a misogynist dinosaur. While Ivanka was a regular stand-in for her father on the campaign trail, Melania was a reluctant campaigner during the election. When Melania did finally make a major speech, at the Republican National Convention, it emerged that bits of it had been cribbed from a speech by Michelle Obama. First Lady of Politics Ivanka A chip off the old block in sharing her father's drive and ambition. While Ivanka met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel First Lady Melania Trump has not made many public appearances with world leaders with the exception of Benjamin Netanyahu's wife. However, Ivanka and her siblings have had nothing but kind things to say about Melania in the press raving about what a good mother and wife she is. Indicating the liberal narrative of the rivalry between the two is likely just false. Ivanka once said the following about Melania's decision to remain more private, Melania is an unbelievable mother. It's pretty uncommon for wives of candidates to not be on the campaign trail every day. And she made a decision I totally respect, which is that she has a young son, he needs stability, he needs routine. My father's traveling so frequently, and she is an unbelievably consistent, loving, and reliable figure in Baron's life. Melania is very smart, she's very warm, she's got an incredible heart. Both stood side by side one another in black mantilla while escorting their spouses to visit with the Pope on the next stop on their overseas trip. Kathleen Parker of the Washington Post said the following about both ladies' appearances at the Vatican City visit with the Pope, preternaturally beautiful, they seemed to glide as apparitions above the sea of dark suits and white robes and must have struck fear in the hearts of men whose culture demands that women be publicly invisible. Wordlessly. They projected strength, intelligence, grace, and a timeless wisdom that all women share. Despite how well they work together and what kind things they have to say about one another it is clear that Melania is remaining more behind the closed doors of privacy while Ivanka doesn't have a problem taking a front row seat. Despite her lack of government salary and the fact that she doesn't have a title like Melania has she is acting like more of a first lady than her stepmother is. She is always at functions and sometimes steps in at her father's meetings. Whereas Melania is always the last to volunteer to give a speech and remained off the campaign trail. Videos show her jokingly not wanting to offer a few words after her husband gave very productive speeches. In reality, the person who is really the first lady is Ivanka Trump. And nobody seems to have a problem with that. She is Ivy League educated and intelligent and she owns her own successful companies alongside her siblings. She is an independent woman who is a byproduct of her father, so it isn't a surprise that he would want her by his side working with him to achieve better ends. The country is lucky to have someone like that her in the administration, and we are better off because of it. Liberals need to stop complaining and be appreciative that we have a role model like her for our children in such a powerful and influential position.
All our children have something productive to learn from her, and we have Donald Trump out thank for that. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.